Welcome to this module. This is actually on the data center networks virtual bridging. It's very small piece of virtualization, just the bridging part. And um, so we will talk about what is a virtual bridge and how do they connect the virtual machines. Then IEEE has a standard. Some other organizations have their own standards like single root IO virtualization from some other organization. And then there are actually two Cisco technologies that we'll talk about, about how to make, aggregate the bridges and links. So basically make one bridge out of many bridges or make one link out of many links. And then go back to the IEEE standards for those. So um, think about network. What is a network? A network consists of starting from a NIC. What is a NIC? Network interface card, right? You connect it to a link and then you connect the links by the bridges to make an L2 network. Then you connect many L2 networks by a router to make an L3 network. And you put that L3 network or L in, in, in a single data center or multiple data center. So the network consists of the host interface, L2 links, L2 bridges, L2 networks, L3 links, L3 routers, L3 networks, blah, blah, blah. And everything has to be virtualized. And there are standards for how to virtualize. So this whole scope of virtualization, I actually I realized after preparing for this class that I could just teach a whole semester class on virtualization and don't have to go to big data or SDN or anything like that. There's so much going on here. So I selected some pieces to talk about, all right? But anyway, so in particular, there is a lot of recent information on host interface virtualization, bridge virtualization, network virtualization, L2 virtualization, and data centers virtualization. And this is all going on in the real world outside there. You go there and everything is being virtualized. And all of this is new. And that's the interesting part. You go to your textbooks on networking, they don't talk about any of it. Because it is so new. All right? So we start with bridges and actually interface today. And I sat down and made my own list of what is going on. So we start with the NIC. There is a lot of companies. So basically, first of all, I realized, and this is my original slide, by the way, that there are two things which are happening in the, in, the, in the virtualization world. One is partitioning. You take one big thing and divide into pieces. Take one big data center, which we call cloud, and give it to clients, multiple tenants, partitioning. Second is aggregation. You take one, several little pieces and make a big one, okay, because you, your application is too big. Because you want to make a big data center, you take many little data centers and make a big one. So there are two things which are, which are the two ways to virtualize. One is partitioning, second is aggregation. We also call that sometimes extension, sometimes interconnection. So for example, when we say Ethernet extension, we are extending the Ethernet from being one room to one city to one world. That is extension. It's the same thing as aggregation. And interconnection is, in case of data, data centers, we call it in, interconnection because when we take two data centers and combine them into one, we call it data center interconnection. So those are, simul, those are the words we want to use, but there are two things happening. Partitioning, which means dividing into pieces, and aggregation, which means combining. Now there is a confusion here, because when you do partitioning, when you do aggregate, so the thing is, um, basically let me first start here. So NIC, for the NIC there are technologies for that, for these bridges or the switches. By the way, bridges and switches, the words are going to be interchangeable here <coughs> because, the in, because the industry doesn't use the word bridge. Industry uses the word switch. IEEE doesn't use the word switch, they use the word bridge. <laughs> All right. So there is so much literature, when you go to IEEE standards, you find bridges, bridges, bridges everywhere. But when you go to the companies, you can't find a bridge, you have to buy a switch. And the point is very clear because the bridge were originally invented were two point. You know, you just had a bridge from here to there, just like a bridge. You know, but the switches are no longer two port. Actually, very first and few switches where they made they are multi port. So as soon as they made multi port, you don't have multi port bridge. Then the name bridge is meaningless, right? So the switches, 
there are standards to partition a single switch into pieces or to combine pieces into a big switch. Link, Ethernet itself. VLAN is a technology for partitioning a single Ethernet and then there are technologies for combining them. Similarly, the L2 network, L2 link and L2 network. All right, you saw the previous slide, L2 link and L2 network. So this is a link and this is a network. Um, you can use, you can combine them or partition them using layer 2 itself. Don't have to go to IP. Or you could combine and partition them using layer 3, which means take the help of IP. And there are routers. You could have partitioned a router or you can combine the routers. Then you can take the L3 network. You can combine them using L1, which means physical layer. L2 or L3 actually, okay? And then applications themselves could be partitioned or combined. So there is virtualization at every layer and there is a lot of competition. From every industry, from every organization and from every company. So let me tell you what is happening. IEEE tries to so see that all the solutions for all the virtualization problems are done in IEEE. Which means that everything has to be done at layer 2. They don't want a solution which requires IP, layer 3. IETF wants to solve all these problems by what? What layer? Does anybody know IETF? What layer they work on? They don't work on layer 2. IEEE works on layer 2. IETF works on layer 3 and up. All right? So they have all the solutions that, that require IP. Otherwise, they will be out of business. <laughs> right? So, so you will see layer 2 solution, layer 3 solution. Then, when you go to a company like, let's say, solutions here in the NIC, there are three companies. Some companies make the chip. Some companies that may, they make the switch. Some companies that make the hypervisor. Right? So they have their own solution. So they have a solution for hypervisor. That requires solution is in the hypervisor because that way a lot of people will buy hypervisor. People who make the chip, they provide the solution in the chip. So you need lots of those chips that do the new solution. And the people who make the switches, their solutions are in the switches because they want you to buy a lot more switches. So there is so much going on and there are so many solutions that it will take whole course semester course just work on this problem and I have to put a stop somewhere. So I am just about to put a stop. <laughs> but I made this list just to see the whole picture. Alright? So you see how, how much is happening. So there are two footnotes here which I should read. All L2, L3 technologies for L2 network partitioning can also be used for higher layers. So if you partition L2, then you can partition IP because IP runs on L2. So if you want to have IP network divided into two pieces, you can use obviously the technology which are listed here, um, L3 partitioning, but you can also use these other ones. All right, first I was about to, I was, when I was making the list, I said I got to copy all of this here also. I said, no, 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 hold on. This is general. Anything that divides L2 will divide L3 by, by design. So that I don't have to do it. Second thing is, the aggregation technologies, which make big out of small pieces, they are also partitioning technologies because when you're looking from the server side, see there is a client side, the tenant, and there is a server. So the client is trying to make an apartment out of a big building, and the homeowner thinks I'm just dividing into little apartments. Right? So there is this kind of overlap and confusion, but basically, these technologies which are aggregation could be called partitioning by some other guys, looking from the other side. All right, having said all this, let's cover the first, um, I think we are going to cover first three lines, first three rows in this table. <coughs> by the way, we, we have covered some other rows here. Um, we have covered Q and Q, we have covered Mac and Mac, PBBT, we have covered all this row, whole row, third, fourth row we have covered completely. Um, in this row, in the fifth row, we have covered some of that, but you know, the so thing is, there is a lot to be done. Alright, so, 
let's go to the <coughs> let's go to the problem first okay so the problem is that on each server now you have multiple virtual machines so these are the virtual machines right but you have only one nic right net nic is the interface card you have only one ethernet card so when you want suppose you create two vms now you need two cards so you create two virtual cards now if you need two virtual cards they have to somehow the traffic has to be combined to get out on one physical one so you need a switch all right so somebody came up with this neat idea vmware and they designed a virtual switch which is in the hypervisor and they provide the virtual nics b nics to each of the vms and then they combine the traffic and it goes out the physical nic and goes out to the outside real switch all right so we have a notation everything that is virtual we start with a v everything that is physical we start with a p so p nic means physical nic p switch means physical switch pm means physical machine vm means virtual machine v switch means virtual switch v nic means virtual nic and so on and so forth all right this will be a standard we'll use throughout v both v and p are lower case except in the case of vm when it is always written in upper case you know for legacy reason so vm you can write little v and capital m but a lot of people will say what is this so you write capital v and capital m everybody knows the notation now right so we need a virtualization for the we need to vnic and we need the v switch and then this is a pnic all right and so on and so forth all right the, the names actually are not on this picture because the picture was taken from some place i, I have read out this picture anyway so there are three companies that i said which work on this space one is the companies that make the hypervisor second is the company that make the nics intel vmware and the company that make the switch the cisco each of them have a solution to help you out in this problem all right and so the vm vendors designed the v switch and so there is a ieee standardized it it is called veb and i will i'm going to talk about that in a in a next slide switch vendors cisco has came up with a solution which requires the outside switch to do all the job and that is called vepa vepa ieee standardized that as well and the intel guys the people who prepared the nic they came up with a solution which was also standardized which is called srioob so three solutions for the same problem problem is that you have multiple vms but only one physical stuff so how do you make multiple virtual stuffs out of virtual nics out of one physical nic so this is ieee standard virtual as bridge veb it is ieee 802.1 qbg 2012 just last year it just came out and so here the thing if you have vms and you have virtual switch and you have physical switch and if you want to go from vm1 to vm2 how can you go one solution is that you just don't have to get out you just inside because you are going inside you could just go from inside all right second solution is that really you should not shortcut anything you should go to this real switch and get out and come back now both have their advantages and disadvantages so this solution is called veb in the veb solution the hypervisor takes care of your, all the problems and when the traffic is local traffic it doesn't get out yeah just a quick question about the veb switch uh, in the real world we have brain packets and protocol for communication in the virtual machines if you want to get something from one vm to the next you just move it in memory so on the 
No, no, it doesn't move in memory. No, no, the memory is not shared. Hold on, let me just explain to you. The, each VM has its own memory, and a hypervisor has its own memory, which are separate. So if you want to send something from the VM to the hypervisor, it has to be moved from one address space to another address space. No, 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 hold on. First of all, the VM doesn't know that it is running on a VM. Take, take that for granted. If you write a web server, you cannot write two web servers, one to run on the VM with another VM and one to run on physical machine to so on and so forth, right? So the VM application is doing exactly as it is, it is running on the real machine, which means it has to take the Ethernet packets, put into IP, and send it out to wherever it is going to go, even though it is just next door. Any other question? And that's a good question, but really there's no shortcut here. In fact, the shortcut that we are talking about here, I will show you in a minute, there's a lot of problem with that shortcut, even though this is a shortcut, that you're not getting out and you're just going in. All right? So this is one solution. The second solution is that there is no shortcut. Everybody has to go out and come back. Now there is a problem with each of them. So first let's start with VEB. In the VEB switch, it could be in the hypervisor or network interface card. So there are NICs which can implement this, or you know, hypervisor can implement this. And in this case, this switch can learn the addresses. I mean, actually it doesn't have to learn the addresses, it could just know the addresses because it, it, it has instantiation the VM. But hypervisor knows everybody. Right? So it, it, it doesn't have to learn anything. And it may participate in the spanning tree or may not, be, may not. And an advantage is no need for external switch in many cases. If you have a single machine with all the servers inside it, you don't need to buy a switch outside. This is, by the way, would be called a one arm switch. It's such a thing. Yeah. The switch is here here. Uh, it's not physical. And there is a PNIC here which I have not shown. The, yeah, P switch is outside. This is the machine, physical machine. I have tried to be consistent in my notation. Dotted lines are virtual, solid lines are physical. Although sometimes I may have forgotten, but I have tried to be con consistent. These are all virtual things. This is one physical machine, and there is a physical switch. Okay? And things which are not necessary, I have not shown here. I have not shown the NICs on each virtual machine, and I have not shown the physical NIC either, because that is not critical here right now. The critical part is that the V switch does the short circuit. All right, so, so this is all good. You don't need to buy another piece of hardware. But if you are Cisco or switch guy, you will say, no, 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 there is a big problem with that one. You need to buy. And the problem is, First of all, let me tell you what the solution is. Solution is that every traffic should go outside and come back. Now that requires a new standard because by the old standard, you never send the packet that came on your port one to back to port one. Right? So the old standards disallow that kind of thing. So now there's a new standard, which is actually the same QBG, <coughs> which covers both of these, which allows you to send things back to the same port. All right. So now, WEPA simply relays the traffic to an external bridge, and this is also called hairpin mode, returns the local VM tech back to WEPA, and otherwise other traffic goes out. Now, what is the advantage of this? First of all, now you can see what is going on in the network, because previously, there are two groups. There is a networking group, and there is a application group. So there are people who are managing the web servers. They don't know much about networking, they know about web servers. And there are networking guys who don't know much about web service, but they know all about IP, TCP, OSP, or BGP. All right. Now the problem the networking guys have is that they cannot see the traffic in their network. Right? And they have a policy, which policy says that you cannot go here, you cannot go there, you should not do this. They cannot in enforce any of those policies. All right. So this mode allows you to have a standard switch which can have a standard policies 
and you can see how much traffic is going from VM1 to VM2. Obviously, we could change this, this switch inside to do all that work, but that will be a lot of work. And you know, and, and the second thing is this network guys may not even see that one. So because of that, basically, WEPA is a solution which provides visibility, allows policy enforcement, is performance because now your CPU is free, your CPU V switch doesn't have to do a lot of work, and management is easier because you are managing this outside switch. Now, next thing is IEEE standard allows it, and many people do it, that you could do both in the same switch, in the same machine, and you could do them in tandem. So you don't have to have one WEPA, one BEV. You could have BEV on a WEPA and a WEPA on a BEV, and you know you would have a whole network inside <laughs> in our switches. Yeah. But that's a different switch. The thing is, if you make that, okay, okay, hold on. So you're saying that this whole switch could be put into software inside. What you have done is, then you have bought that switch from Cisco. Cisco does sell software switches, by the way. So it's, it's a real normal switch, except that it is not outside, it is inside. Okay? As opposed to, then you, are, you buy a hypervisor from VMware, and then you put a Cisco switch inside. Yes, you can do that, but that is as good as this picture. And VMware doesn't make this switch. See, that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's, there is also this ownership issue. And the, what will come up the open source VEB this, this switch, and then this whole this is about these switches can work. Fine, fine. See, here's the, here's the thing, and the confusion will come throughout this thing. That everything that is virtual can be made physical. Everything that is hardware can be made in software, and so on and so forth. So the standards try to do the functionalities. And what they do is, they define two functionalities. One is VEB, one is WEPA. WEPA says, I'm not going to do anything on this packet. I'm just going to be a simple gatekeeper, pick up here and throw there, pick up here, throw there, pick up there. So this, this is all I do. That is WEPA, right? And VEB is looking at everything, oh, this is going this way, oh, I put this here. So those are two standards. How do you implement them? <laughs> functionality. This is a functionality, not packaging. Well, that is true. That is true. But anyway, so the idea is that now you see these solutions right here, two solutions, right? Any question about this WEPA and WEP again? More? Any different questions? Yeah. VEB? Oh, advantage of VEB is that you don't need the external switch. This is the line for some cases. What is the disadvantage? You go to the competition, and these are the four disadvantages of VB. All right? I mean, is that clear? That all the advantages of BEPA are the disadvantages of VB. All the advantages of VB are the disadvantages of BEPA. VEB is a switch. Yeah, BEPA also needs a switch, yeah. P switch. Yeah. yeah, no, no, the thing is, you might actually, in a realistic case, you will need P switch anyway, because the thing is, not all the traffic is going inside. If anything is going outside, then it has to go five different places, right? You cannot put five next year, so you give it to a switch, and the switch sends it all over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, cascading will show, I mean, the next picture, picture is coming up on the cascading, okay? Um, before I go into cascading, one more issue came up, <coughs> and that is that there are several things that the kind of traffic, like particularly there was some problem with the promiscuous traffic. So there are some machines which want to see all the traffic, okay? And when you do these kind of switches, then there was a kind of problem. So they had to come up with a new concept called channels. So let me explain how that concept comes in. So this is your machine. In this machine, you have two switches, VEB, and I have used word E-switch here. Now let's see, what is E-switch? E-switch is actually in the hardware. 
so the neck implements a stretch the neck implements a stretch so this is not software switch this is e switch okay and this is in the software this is called v switch so now we have p v and e everybody knows p and v now know your e e is electronic so now you have these two switches and this is this was done by and i could have changed the word e here you know because depending on what nick you have it might be able to implement v bepa or web b e b so i just showed you some examples and there are some machines which do not go through the switch they go directly and there is only one physical nick here you see solid line here this is the boundary <coughs> and now this is a physical nick a physical switch external switch so basically what it is is that every and and these are called vsi these interfaces at the switches are called vsi so vsi is the virtual system interface the virtual station interface so this is red and this is blue this is red those are the colors of the vlans so this blue can talk to this blue these reds can talk to each other but the blue cannot talk to red right that is the vlan <coughs> now all of this traffic goes through and these switches also have some ports coming out which go which somehow get combined and get into a single queue and then get out all right now we need to know over here if we are going to do all the work here then we need to know which switch and which port these things came out right and so basically we need to divide this nick into channels this is one physical nick a physical link but we need to divide that into channels we call s channel s channel is the traffic coming from multiple ports so there is at least there are three ports here we see 1 2 and 3 these three traffics have to be distinguished to be set up three what we call s channels so these are virtual channels actually so this switch now implements three virtual ports and these things are somehow connected all right what that means is that we put vlan inside a vlan so this is q in q basically there is a vlan between these two ports this port and so basically when the traffic comes out here we look at this outer vlan and we decide that this is going to this port or that port or that port okay so that's how we can share this if we didn't have that vlan stuff then all of this traffic will come and there is no markup left by anybody here as to which switch and where it came from and we would be confused because switches don't put their addresses on anything so s channel s channel is basically these virtual channels which is partitioning this link or this little link here and um, they are service channels and they are basically another layer of vlan so this traffic is already all vlan and then we put another vlan on the top of it q and q yeah so do you have any specific reason to use the q and q rather than the legacy vlans oh so basically when you need two vlans here right legacy vlan is there already but now you need to distinguish you see this is also blue and this is also blue but we need to distinguish which switch it came from so i mean basically so you need this is basically we go back to the same thing like we talked about why the providers need their own vlan because they don't want to deal with the with the customer vlan so these these are customer vlans this is the provider vlan we learned in the carrier concept so we kind of have a big idea that you know carrier networks are big but here there is a tiny carrier network few centimeters long yeah so what's the difference between connecting a vm to uh throw throw the channel to the switch and between connecting the vms throw the vpa so the direct this one directly right yeah okay basically this will be a little bit more work on the part of the vm so the vm this vm actually has to implement vnic 
I mean, we have to implement more than these other VMs. Okay? So, generally, there is some switching part, etc., etc., which these will provide whatever service these guys are providing. So, this VM will have to do a little bit more work. And so, I have shown you all the three possibilities here. You could just use only one of them, for example, you could just have one vSwitch which covers all of the ports, or you could have, you know, you know, things like that I showed you, right? So, this is just, I have showed you, try to show all three possibilities. Directly connected, connected to a WebPi, connected to a BB. Okay, so let's just remember. So, we know what is the VSI. <coughs> VSI is this, this set of ports. Embedded eSwitch. E-switch is something that is in the NIC hardware that can implement web or WEPA. And then V port is the VEB port, the virtual egress ports. These are the egress ports of the switches. Right? Egress port on a switch or v ports on V switch with directly okay. Or if they are directly connected, then those that is also a V port. And the S channels are these logical things which have been set up. Okay. Now, here is an example. This VLM wants to talk to that VM. Both of them are on the blue VLAN, so they could talk. Okay. So, it sends a packet to first WEPA switch and that says, okay, all right, um, it's going to go outside. And then here, this component, which we SVLAN component, this is the component that actually is encapsulating. This is the one that creates a new VLAN. So here, a new VLAN is put. So now the packet is encapsulated, number two. Packet is encapsulated and a new VLAN is added. Now it gets out here and based upon that VLAN, basically it gets to this, this component, puts it into this port three, where that tag is taken off. Now it is only one tag left. In this part, there are two tags. Okay, I didn't have a way of showing this thicker line, but basically to show that this is two two tags. This is one tag here. Now one tag is left. It could go out or it could go inside or whatever. It doesn't matter. In this blue VLAN, and then finally it ends up here on this port, where it has to go there to E port because they figured out that the destination is here. So they have to put a new tag here again. A new tag is put and the packet goes in and this component here, this other component, decides that it has to go to that port and it goes finally out to VM. Now, I should have ideally shown much of this into, into, into dotted line, but you know, I forgot. So basically, see, thing is, the idea is that basically things are correctly labeled, but sometimes the dotted and the solids are, you know, kind of, you know, didn't get time to put them in the correct lines. but. But the idea is clear. There is single VLAN here, second VLAN is put here, and then second VLAN is taken off here, second VLAN is put here, and then second VLAN is taken off there. All right? So this is the S channel. There is an S channel between A and A, there is an S channel between B and B, there is an S channel between C and C, D and D, and E and E. So there are one, two, three, four, five S channels. I'm sorry, the switch support what? Supports the, the packet port to the A9 port. What is it actually? Packet support to? Yeah, support it to be forwarded to Ethernet. Or Ethernet? Yeah, no, Ethernet. Internet? Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. No, no, let me just say this one. I have shown you an example where it is necessary. Suppose this is a BEB switch, and this VM talks to that VM. This switch will reject it right away because this is a, you are a yellow and this is a blue, right? And that's all. But suppose by chance these both are yellow, then VEB switch will not forward it outside. VEB switch will just short circuit it, right? So there are other possibilities which I have not shown here, but this particular traffic which is going from here to there really has to get out because first of all it is WEPA. Right? Second of all, it is connected to a different switch. Would that be the 
same if the first uh, virtual switch uh, was VIP? Was what? The, the VB, yeah, it is still has to get out because the thing is, it cannot just forward here. So it has to give to somebody else to get there. They are not connected by the same web, web VB. They are not connected to the same switch. Any other question? I like these questions. Please ask. Yeah. Yellow is the customer VLAN. I mean the yellow on the right. Right, Yellow on the right. Yeah. yeah. This yellow? Yeah. Oh, that is just okay, and that's actually random. I should have put a random color here, or I should have put this dark gray here. Yeah. So not the yellow. No, actually there are many purposes. First of all, this belongs to, let's say, company X, and this belongs to company Y, this belongs to company Z. You know, there are many tenants here. And so you cannot just put all of them on one switch and let them talk to each other. All right? And this company may not trust this switch because they don't want them to see their traffic. So they want to... <laughs> This is multi-tenancy, remember. The companies don't trust. They're all on the same physical machine, same physical hardware, same, but they cannot use the same even virtual switch. Okay, okay go ahead. Next. But couldn't we use like one big switch with different VLANs? Because... Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. So the thing is, who will own that switch? The thing is, if there is IB, I mean, just take any two companies which are enemy to each other. Okay, Samsung and, uh, Samsung and Apple, right? So this belongs to Samsung, this belongs to App Apple. Would they let it go through the same B switch? Maybe not until they encrypted it. So, so the idea is that um, the switches, virtual switches will have to belong to somebody, so they will have their own switches. So they will not just have one switch until the thing has been encrypted, things like that. So there is a lot of complication here. So there is some reason for people to have more than one switch inside. Yes, you could have. You could have just one big switch and then everybody is connected and then traffic remains inside. That's why IEEE has standardized both methods. The same standard covers both BEB and BEPA. Okay? Um, all right. I will stop right here and then uh, we continue on Wednesday.